Thank you for tuning in to Bethel, BHG TV. Like, share, and subscribe. Now our host, Pastor Johnson. Greetings, 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 y'all. Greetings, you all caught me behind the scenes. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another class right here at Bethel BHG. TV. Let's see who we have. Oh yeah, right in our chat room. Who do we have? Let's go over there and look. Brother Brian Johnson, first in our chat room tonight. Chiruda's in the house. Landon Paul. Sister Marie. All in the house tonight, brothers and sisters. Glad you all are here tonight with us. And it is another historical um, lesson dealing with black history. Historical in terms is going to tell you who you are. So we want to thank all of you all for being in here tonight. Thank you for... Uh, just the things you do. Shout out to all of our moderators. Thank you, Sister Marie, for setting that up this Friday night. Looking forward to that in West Palm Beach. Let's get right away to our scripture reading, and we're going to get right into this right away. We're not going to take much time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Every now and then I'll read it backwards so you can see this is another technique. Wisdom begins when you fear the Lord. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His commandments Give us a good understanding. His praise endureth forever. So tonight, brothers and sisters, we have, we are embarking on Black History Month. Shout out to Pastor Bowie. Awesome lesson this week. This week is titled to slavery. You want to be in a Israel of God near you, near you. You want to be in the Israel God. It's going to be a great lesson. People that have approached me, um, that I've invited to the lesson, they, they, brothers and sisters, was just elated over the information that they got. So tonight we're going to do something a little different. Uh, not, well, normally than what I normally do, what I've been doing for the past few nights, and that is, providing information through footage that I put together. This or lessons that uh, my brother came and put together, uh, Brother Benet Israel, we were doing con we were doing conferences and um, he, he would teach um, the history. I would teach uh, the importance of, of observing feast days. So, um, I'm going to get out of the way. I want you all to check this out. I want you to look at what we're going to give you. You will, brothers and sisters, enjoy this. Now, this first part that we're going to put out, um, it is something I did to right here, right here in the studio at home, putting this together, putting the scriptures together. It took, 
it took um, it took a long time, several weeks, for this 15-minute uh, information um, uh, on biblical history, the people of the book. In fact, it's titled "People of the Book." And then after that, we got two other lessons through production we're going to bring to you. And all of that said and done, I am going to get out of the way. Keep each and every one of us in prayer, the Vickers family, Brother Tobias Vickers, Sister uh, Linda Jones Vickers, uh, Brother Vickers lost his mother um, a few weeks ago. Uh, keep Brother Scully in mind, Elder Scully right here in the Bethel IOG class. He lost his stepmother. Also, um, my brother up in Apollo Beach, uh, I, as I told you all last night, there's a young man that is going through and he needs our prayers uh, through Brother Apollo uh, and his name is Brother Chang. Keep him in prayer. And uh, do keep Sister Cle Sheila Clayton's son. She is passed, she passed away, but her son is really taking this thing as, as anyone who leaves, leaves loses a mother would do. So keep them in prayer also. So that being said, let's check this out. Uh, again, uh, I put this first production together. It was a little rough. I had to grab stuff, uh, put scriptures, time it in. It was a whole process. Uh, and I was able to get 15 minutes from the amount of weeks that we put into it. So that being said, I'm gonna get away. We're gonna check this out and uh, enjoy. And it's your leave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with a sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee, until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth. 
and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her, build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look, and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed, from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed for ever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustest, throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege, 
and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee, so that the man that is tender among you, and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege, and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee, until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass, that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good, and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you.
All right. Shalom, shalom. Hey, family, it's B'nai Ben Israel. Uh, we are returning for our second installment of Black History, the Inquisition. And so this is part two of Black History, the Inquisition. So what we're going to do is going to do a, a couple of things. One is we're going to do a quick review of uh, the first video and not necessarily a quick review, but well, I guess it is a quick review. But I just want to um, point out some things that we didn't necessarily point out in the first video. And then after that, of course, we'll get uh, rolling into our uh, second series of references. Because what we like to do is just simply read reference. Uh, we may give a bit of commentary over the top on top of that. But other than that, at the end of the day, it's reading references. Okay. All right. So with that being said, I do want to give a big, a bit of a backdrop for uh, uh, for this this video. So I'd like to start off with uh, Deuteronomy 28. And if most of you aren't aren't familiar with Deuteronomy 28, it basically outlines the blessings and the curses uh, for the children of Israel. So basically, whenever uh, when Israel entered into a, a, an agreement with um, the Most High Yahuwah, um, you know, Yahuwah outlined blessings and curses. The blessings were there if Israel would do what they were supposed to do, and the curses were there if Israel didn't do what they were supposed to do. So, basically, we know that the curses uh, befell Israel, the children of Israel, and according to Deuteronomy 28, you can actually use the curses to find or identify the people uh, of the children of Israel today because it's supposed to be a perpetual uh, curse. So one of the, I did want to point out one of the uh, the curses in Deuteronomy 28 and you can actually should be able to see it there on your screen. And one is Deuteronomy 28 verse 32 and it, where it says, Thy sons and thy daughters. So as we do a quick review, I want us to focus in on the children of the Jews that are on the west coast of Africa. I want us to focus in on the children. Just pay attention to, pay attention to references about children, sons, and daughters. Because uh, if we look, if we kind of if we cross reference that with Deuteronomy twenty eight, it says, "Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people." And thine eyes shall long and failing with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. So basically one of the curses that would befall the children, the true children of Israel, would be that their sons and thy daughters would be given unto another people. Okay. Now let's take a look at another uh, of, the, of the many curses in Deuteronomy 28. And this particular curse says... Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou, sh thou shalt not enjoy them, for they, for they, you know, the sons and daughters, shall go into captivity. Did you catch that? Let's read it again. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they, the sons and daughters, for they shall go into captivity. Okay, so now that we have that backdrop, I just wanted to kind of lay that foundation. Let's go into our review of the references that we uh, reviewed within our first uh, video. Not all of them, just a, just a handful. So in our uh, first reference review, we're going to just talk about John Ogilvy one, once one more time. And if you didn't re don't remember, John Ogilvy is one of our high-value references in his the reason why we refer to him as a high value reference is because of the time period that his reference comes from and also who the reference is. So this reference comes from the 1600s and also it comes from John Ogilvy, who at the time was the cosmographer and geographic printer of the king. And I believe it was King uh, Charles II. So John Ogilvy would be someone that we would want to know uh get an idea of, of what his thoughts were because he would have, you know, we would expect him to have the ear of the king at the time. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with the references and, and the page numbers, that sort of thing. If you want that, just you know, take a peek at the other video. 
but we're just trying to help speed things up here. So I'm just going to go straight to the uh, quote. So the quote that we want to review uh, here with John Ogilvy is is it's within the uh, the red uh, <clears throat> rectangle on the screen. But you can see where it says. Let's see if I can find my place here. It says that John the Third, King of Portugal, sent a colony thither. You know, sent a so John, King of Portugal, sent a co colony thither above two hundred years before. So 200 years before the writing of the book that we're reading now. So this book was written in, I believe, it was 1670. Uh, so 200 years before that, it was in the 1400s. And we know, of course, King John was around. The King John of Portugal was around during the, uh, the 1400s. So, that, so, so, far, so, so far, so good. So it says, so, uh, it said, John, the king of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before. So in the 1400s, John sent a, sent a colony to the west coast of Africa to uh, uh, St. Thomas. It says, <clears throat> well, to the west coast of Africa. It says, whom though the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled Guinea. And I got to have a map of Guinea. Next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas. So he sent new inhabitants who settled those three places. And it said that so they, may, they might be better used to the air. That the said king sold all those Jews for slaves. That refused to embrace the Roman religion. Okay, so we understood that uh, the king of Portugal sent the Jews to the west coast of Africa. He sent them to three places, Guinea, Angola, and St. Thomas, because they refused to embrace the Roman religion. And it said, and caused their children. Now, this is what I wanted to key in on uh, on this, this go around. It says, and caused their children to be baptized. From whom? So, from the children. Coming thither in great numbers. So, did you catch that? Let's, let me back up a little bit. It says, and cause their children to be baptized. From whom? From these children. Coming thither. And where, where is thither? The west coast of Africa. In great numbers. Then it says, most of the present inhabitants were descended. Okay, so just want to key in on the fact that the ch it was the children that were coming to the west coast of Africa in great numbers, and that it was the their uh, John Ogilby's belief that most of the present inhabitants were descended. OK, so now that we have that, I just want to show you and kind of refresh your, your memory on the, the uh, uh, west coast of Africa in Guinea. So here's a, a uh, outline of the Guinea uh, territory on the west coast of Africa, just in case you're um, confused as far as what it what it looks like. So here's what it looks like. Uh, Angola is, uh, you know, right below um, Guinea there. So it's pretty much the, the whole west coast of Africa. So this entire territory, all this yellow here were um that's where the jews were sent and that the, that the descendants of these guys um uh, were the children it was the children that were sent here uh from the west from uh portland or from the king of uh, portugal okay all right so let's go to our next next uh, uh reference here just for a quick review and so this is another high value reference that we went over last time but again we're going to focus on the references to the children this time so this comes from uh, the official chronicler of King John, uh, uh, Garcia de Resendi. So Garcia was the official chronicler of King John. So we would also want to know what uh, Garcia would have to say, right? He's not just some guy. He's, uh, he's an a, um, official chronicler. Now it says, I'm going to skip down to the bottom to the second uh, underlying uh, red on the line here where it says, well, I'll start in the sentence here. It says, in 19, I'm sorry, in 1493, those who could not pay had their children taken away from them. 
baptized by force and deported to St. Thomas or Sao Tome in order to be raised as Christians. All right. So we see there where it says had their children taken away from them, baptized by force and deported. They were sent to St. Thomas in order to be raised as Christians. So again, we see that it was the children that were taken away from the from the Jews, from the parents and sent to the West Coast of Africa. If you can kind of just sit back and think about that for a while, what that must have looked and felt like, you you know, you'll you'll get you'll get an idea of how uh, traumatic that had to, had to have been. But again, this is uh, due to pro this is uh, can be found in Deuteronomy. Right. Because we read that before Deuteronomy 20, 28, I believe it was 41. It said that the children would go into captivity. So here this is we're actually seeing it play out in these references. OK. All right. Now, going over to our uh, third quote here. And this is, again, is pretty much uh, says the same thing where it says. Um, I'm going to skip down to the last uh, sentence in this in the underlying section here where it says. Nor was this all, since the king wrested from their parents all children between the ages of three and ten. And what we what we noted before was that in, in this reference it says three and ten, and uh, previous other references uh, we see that it, it was increased from from three to ten to three and uh, children and uh, young adults in their teens. And then it was later increased to three and young adults in their 20s. So that uh, it explains how you get uh, great numbers of these uh, Jewish children on the West Coast of Africa. All right. So now that we've established that, I just wanted to make sure that you keyed in on the fact that it was the children that were sent over to the West Coast of Africa and that. Um, Knowing that, you can begin to see how a people, a race of people, can be um, began to be separated from their history, right? Because they're separated from their parents and they're uh, being raised uh, to be something else. All right, so um, now on to our, our next set of references. So for 
for this reference, what we're going to do is that we're going to start off with a contemporary reference, and then we're going to move to our um, our uh, antiquity references. So now that we know that the Jews were sent to Africa, right? Um, they weren't. They, I mean, they, they were sent uh, by the Portuguese and the Spain, and and they were from also, also the expulsion edicts in in uh, Europe. You know that they uh, basically you know gathered on the west coast of Africa. Then sometimes the, you know the question is, well, did anyone know about it? You know, other than the people that dump that dumped them there, the people that that placed them there, did anyone know about it? Well, what we found that is that you know there are some contemporary researchers that that have you know run into the truth, so to speak. So one example would be uh, Alan Godby. You know, Alan Godby was a, a researcher. Uh, in a, Duke, he was a Duke professor, professor in the early 1900s, and in his book, uh, The Lost Tribes and Myth, Suggestions Towards uh, Rewriting Hebrew History, uh, in the back of his book, I'm just what I'm showing here on the screen is just uh, on the back of his book, the map, you can see where he uh, identifies locations of uh, black Jews in Africa. He calls them you know, Negro Jews, Moorish Jews, Falasha Jews, and Yemen Jews, and Berber Jews. So, in his book, you know, he, he identifies, of course, you know, um, you know, Angola Jews. So the Angola Jews, you know, we read those references in the previous video, but uh, Alan God, Godby does a good job of, of uh, showing you exactly where those Jews are. Same thing with, you know, Saint, Saint, Tome, Saint Tome or Saint Thomas Jews. Um, and this is an interesting uh, view here of the uh, Nigerian uh, Jews. It shows you where the Levite cities were located off of the uh, the Nigger River. And then you also see uh, B'nai Ephraim, that basically means sons of Ephraim. And then below that, you also see where it says terracotta heads patterned uh, after uh, 500 BC in the foreign quarters of Memphis. So the takeaway here is that the, um, uh, you know, contemporary researchers like John, o John, I'm sorry, not John, uh, Alan Godby uh, and, and others were, are a, were able to identify where uh, these uh, Israelites were on the west coast of Africa. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to review a reference by Han Hannah Adams uh, before, uh, as a uh, background here. So Hannah Adams, you know, she wrote it in her book in the 1800s as well. She wrote that the, uh, that the Jews that lived in Portuguese, Portugal and Spain, uh, professed to be from the tribe of Judah. So what that means is that the Portuguese and the Spanish understood that the Jews in their territories were from Judah. Why is that significant? Well, when we look at maps of the west coast of Africa, and you may have you may have seen this 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 map before, but the the thing here is that, you know, this is basically the Slave Coast. You can see where it says Slave Coast here at the bottom. And then at the top, there's another name for it. It says Kingdom of Judah or Slave Coast. So there was two names given to this territory. But the question is, who gave this sliver of land that name? Like, who called this, uh, this area here the Kingdom of Judah? Just think about that for a moment. So, and if you're, you know, probably if you're guessing that it was made possibly the Portuguese, well, let's let's not guess. Let's look at the uh, references. Now, this reference comes from a book called Africa and, and Its Inhabitants, Volume Two, and this comes from page four ten. Uh, do want to point out that above, I do have a map here. It's it's another French map. I didn't have the, uh, the details here, but you can also see that it's also uh, calling the slave coast uh, the kingdom of Judah. So, um, if we look at a reference on page four ten, it says, skipping to the second um, sentence, it says the old writers called it Judah, and its inhabitants were said to be Jews, while the neighboring river Alala whose real name is Ephra, became the Euphrates. And of course, if we take a look at our map at the top, you'll see, if you can look closely at your screen, at, at the top of that uh, 
yellow circle it says Euphrates there. So that we do see that we can confirm that in maps. Just want to point that out. So uh, if we keep reading, it says during the flourishing days of the slave trade, from 16 to 18,000 were annually transported from uh, Judah. As the Portuguese called this place. Okay, let's stop right there. So we, we it just said that the Portuguese that the Portuguese called this place. And we'll, we'll we'll read later it was the Portuguese slavers that called this called the place Judah. Now, why is that significant? Well, a couple of things. One is so this is a this uh, reference confirms that the it was the Jews that were on the west coast of Africa and it also confirms that it was the Jews that were uh, being sent as slaves remember it says that during the flourishing days of the slave trade from 16 to 18,000 were annually transported from the Jew okay so we know that so this tells us that the Jew that it was the Jews that were sent into the transatlantic slave trade. It was the Jews that were placed on the west coast of Africa. And it makes sense that this place would be called uh, the kingdom of Judah by the Portuguese because they, the Portuguese uh, placed them, placed the Jews there uh, under, um, uh, was it King John? King John. So we read those references that said as much, right? So it's not us saying that, it's the, the references that are, that are saying it. All right, now going to our next quote, and uh, this quote comes from, you can see the, the name there, but this is a, <clears throat> this is a, a, a quote from a French book, and it comes from page 272. And let's read it, it says, Judah, Wida, and it has different names here, but a Judah, is an ancient city frequented since the 16th century by Portuguese slave traders who gave it its name. All right, so let's read that again. It says, uh, Judah is an ancient city frequented since the 16th century by Portuguese slave traders who gave it its name. Its inhabitants were called Judaic. And indeed, they were regarded as a remnant of the scattered tribes of Israel. All right. So we can see here that the Portuguese gave the slave coast the name Kingdom of Judah. OK, just wanted to establish that. And as <clears throat> as a cross check, you know, this is just another reference kind of thrown in there just to um, hammer home the point that the these Jews were were uh, uh, were in fact black Jews uh, <clears throat> let's take a look it says uh, I'm gonna see three paragraphs here but I'm gonna go jump down to the third I'm sorry the second paragraph in the uh, the sentence where it says a remarkable fact in the history of Luango and the Empire of Congo is that the country, according to a statement which was fully credited by Oldendorp himself, a writer of most correct judgment and of unimpeachable veracity. So this is a, an upstanding guy, right? Is basically what the uh, William Armistead is saying. It says, contains many Jews settled in it. So to answer the point, or to answer the question, did other, did they know that there were Jews there on the west coast of Africa? And what we're finding out is that the answer is yes. But let's keep reading. It says, who retain their religious rights and the distinct habits which keep them isolated from the other nations? Though the separate, let's pay attention here. It says, though the separate from the African population, they are black. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. We don't need 
any interpretation around that, right? So they are black and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. So basically, they, they look like them, you know, but they're Jews. It says, it is probably an allusion to this case that Pennington, you know, Pennington's another author during the time, in his book, which is called Textbook, says, the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea, okay, settled on the coast of Africa are black. Okay, so just want to make sure that we know that these Jews are are the uh, are the black Jews. Okay, okay. Now, with the Jews being on the west coast of Africa, you know we saw that on some maps it was called the Kingdom of Jude, Kingdom of Judas or the Slave Coast. Um, what you may not know is that there there were other names that were given to that uh, territory or that area, and these other names actually shed light on who the people were there. Okay, so you'll see on the I have a map on the screen, and you can see where it says um, it's giving you three names for this region. You know, So Udan, Lam Lam, or Negro Lam. So So Udan, Lam Lam, or Negro Lam. And we'll take a look at the word uh, so you Dan here uh, shortly. But uh, look at you see lamb, lamb, or negro lamb. So I just wanted to let you be aware that of those names there. So let's read a reference about uh, so you Dan. So see your reference on the screen. That's the uh, title and book. Uh, authors on there as well. You can see the publication date and. Um, this comes from a page as close to the front of the book. You know, the front of the book has a bunch of Roman numerals before it gets into the uh, the numbering of the book. Now, so I have that at the bottom here. But just wanted to <clears throat> point out where it says, The Jews of Soudan are, according to my informers, divided into many large and small tribes, with whose names they are unacquainted. Their mode of life in some countries is pastoral, but the towns are filled with traders and artificers of that faith who gain substance at their uh, several employments in the service of the Muslims under whose government they live as vassals. So we just took it. We, just, we were just looking at a map, right, where it said, so you, Dan. So now we're reading where, you know, the Jews are, you know the Jews are there, so this is just another confirmation that the Jews were in so you did. And I'm going to skip down a bit, just kind of speed things up, where it says the lands occupied by these people cover a wide extent between Messina and Cavi. So basically, from this this quote, this quote tells us that there's a that the Jews were kind of spread out uh, over a vast vast territory. Okay. And um, <clears throat> and then it, it gives a quote from Bashaw. Now Bashaw is a uh, is an African, uh, you know, black African in African Africa, and you know he tells us you know why the Jews are are there. It says uh, they uh, let's see they are not esteemed like us for they are a people hardened in their sins and obstinate in their infidelity. It says the anger of God is upon them. So they knew that God's anger was was upon them. And it says, it says, and therefore are they given to the rule of the Muslims. So they it was their understanding that God's anger was upon them because they had broke God, God's laws and that they were given to the to the Muslims to do to do with as they will. And then um, if you keep reading in that book, if you actually get a copy of that book, you'll see where uh, Bashal then goes on to, to uh, describe some of the, the colors of, of the Jews one of the things I, I did learn as I was um, uh, researching, you, and what you'll find out the same thing is that whenever there's a an, an African giving a description of color, uh, Africans tend to, to be a bit more descriptive. Like they they um, differentiate differentiate between the hues of brown, whereas if uh, you know if there's a European uh, writer giving a description, they tend to be more you know black and white. You know, not necessarily. Uh, 
acknowledging the different uh, gradients there. So because of that, you know, I have a little blurb here at the bottom of the uh, this reference just to point out that the uh, Bashal goes on to describe the Jews as, as brown colored instead of the pitch black color of Selma Shanti. All right. Side note there, but just an FYI. OK, <clears throat> so some of the other names of the uh, the Jews on the West Coast of Africa. So we saw where, you know, we had So Yudan there and we read about the about So Yudan. So but most people don't know that the Jews were also called Caffrey. And what was significant about Caffrey? So Caffrey was um, a name that was given by the Portuguese. Right. And the Portuguese, it says uh, Caffrey's or Caffrey's, that is to say, lawless or outlaws. OK, so that that was the meaning of, of the word Caffrey. And that matches up with what we've learned so far and what we've read so far in our references. Because remember that the, the um, Portuguese and the Spanish and some of these other countries, they were sending their these Jews over as prisoners, you know, because they were law, quote unquote lawbreakers. But um, so it makes sense that they were called Caffrey's or they, they would call them outlaws. OK, so again, things are we're, we're noticing that our references are starting to line up because we, we have a good understanding of what happened um, in the, uh, in the history leading up to this. And so that, therefore, when we, when we read works like, uh, works from Leo Africanus and, you know, we're not surprised when Leo Africanus says, you know, some also think that the people called Caffrey or Caffrates at this day who are Gentiles draw their original from the Jews being environed on every side by idolaters. They have by little and little swayed from the law of Moses. We just read about that, right? And so are they become, as it were, insensible idolaters. On the other side, the Jews being wonderfully increased in Spain, passed one after another into Africa in Mauritania and dispersed themselves even to the confines of Numidia especially by means of traffic. So we know that traffic in these old books means slavery. Okay. All right. So our, our, what we're finding out is that our references are all lining up. We're starting to see a uniform uh, history, a uh, picture of history uh, to, to be uh, formed here. All right. And this is just another quote um just to kind of call just to call attention to the uh, description of the jews um it's actually another old and odendorp quote where it says a fact worthy of the attention of travelers is that according to odendorp the kingdom of luango contains black jews scattered throughout the country they are despised by the negroes who do not even dine to eat with them okay all right so i won't go too much in, into that one um just want to make it through these these slides my goal is for this uh presentation that is not to be too long here so uh, we're getting closer closer to the end of it just want to run through these um, references so um, this reference you saw the hopefully you saw the uh, titles title uh, uh, screen there but here it says Yehudi a place of great trade this place is reported to be inhabited by one of the lost tribes of Israel possibly an immigration from the tribe of Judah. Yehuda in Africa and Arabic signifies Judah. Yehudi signifies Jew. It is not impossible that many of the lost tribes of Israel may be found dispersed in the interior regions of Africa when we shall become better acquainted with that continent. All right. Okay. And, um, I do want to end on this uh, particular quote. And for this quote, it's called a private journal kept during the nigger uh, expedition. So in the 1800s, there was this guy, was William Simpson. He was going into uh, a company, an expedition to the, um, you know, modern day it's called Niger River, but back in the day it was called Nigger River. So he was going to accompany an expedition. And prior before, uh, to embarking, you know, he was giving... You know, two letters from two, two chief Portuguese 
rabbis in London. And, and um, thought it'd be interesting just to take a look at the letter that was given to, uh, to William Simpson as he went to explore the Niger River or the Niger River Delta. Let's see, uh, let's take a look at this letter. And it says, it reads, Peace to our brethren, the children of Israel, in all place of their habitations. I, the servant of the Lord named David the Little, is he who writes this in order to inquire after your welfare and the number of souls and wishes also to know your occupation and what books are to be found amongst you after the conclusion of the Talmud. Now that part is interesting because if you're familiar with the uh, Renaissance age and um, or whatnot, you know that the um, uh, that there was a lot of book burnings that occurred back then. So the fact that he's asking for books right off, right off the bat uh, doesn't really uh, bode well for <laughs> whoever he's he's going to run into. Okay. All right. So so that's that. Now, uh, for the last part of this video, I'm going to close this out with um, uh, by looking at the slave manifest. So now that we've read some, we read references that showed that the Jews were placed on the west coast of Africa. So most people know that the slaves were sent from the west coast of Africa, but very few people know that the slaves were actually placed onto the west coast of Africa first. The Jews were placed on the west west coast of Africa first. Okay, uh, in addition to those that that um, migrated from um, Jerusalem, um, but specifically those from the Inquisition, which was going on at the time, and those that were expelled from the you know the different places, were placed on the west coast of Africa, then turned around and sold as slaves. Okay, all right. So um, now. Let's take a look at what we're going to do here. Is we're just going to do a quick exercise where we learn um, how to identify Israelite, Israel, Israelite, Israelite names when we see them. Now, to do that, we're just going to take a. We're going to use the Strong's Concordance, and we're going to run through the Strong's Concordance, and we're going to see that the um, the things that Israel, the children of Israel, like to do is to put Yah's name in their name. So the, the prophets understood that, you know, you have Isaiah, Jeremiah, so they understood that and they, they, and they uh, had a direct communication with, um, with the Most High. Uh, we look at Isaiah, right, and we, and we look at the, um, uh, I'm going to butcher this name here, so I'm just going to read where it says, Brother of Yah, and an Israelite name. And, but just, just notice where it says, the name of several Israelites, you know, Yah has grass. The name of several Israelites. The next one. Yah is mighty. The name of several Israelites. Yah has helped. The name of a number of Israelites. So there's a lot of people um, during that time putting Yah's name in their name. A lot of Israelites. Let's see. B'nai Yah. Yah has built up the name of several Israelites. You see that? Yah sees an Israelite of Jeremiah's time, okay? Uh, Yah loosens the name of a number of Israelites. So you can see it kind of goes on and on and on. I'm going to kind of shortcut this here, uh, click through it. But just know that a good way to find out um, or to identify Israelite name is just to look at, uh, see if it has Yah in the name, and also El, um, one of my... Um, uh, uh, priest called that out as well. Is that the L was also used? One of my elders pointed out L, L like Joe L, uh, Ezekiel L, uh, used in the names of it, of several Israelites as well. But for this exercise, we're only going to take a look at Yah. Like what names have Yah in it? So if we take a look at the uh, you know the transatlantic slave trade uh, database and do a quick search for Yah, just to see if if you know the cross check to see if that there's uh, were Israelites that were on those ships, you know, we do find the names of several Israelites. And this is, uh, we're in the A's right here. Again, the names of several Israelites. So we see the same pattern that we, that we find in the Bible and in the Strong's Concordance. We find that exact same pattern in, um, 
in the transatlantic slave trade uh, database of the people that were on this on the ships. So with that being said, we'll end this right here. We'll call this part two. Um, the, and again, the purpose of part two is just to uh, confirm the uh, the Jews on the west coast of Africa. Part one, uh, you know, we read the references that talked about the Jews being placed onto the west coast of Africa. And in this video, we talked about the um, the Jews, you know, confirmation that the Jews were on the west coast of Africa by other other references. Uh, thanks again for listening. Uh, again, feel free to, to continue your research and shalom. Shalom, family. It's your brother, uh, B'nai Ben Israel, coming to you once again um, with a third installment of our series, Black History, the Inquisition. That's Black History, the Inquisition. And I think with this installment, we'll try to wrap up um, the segment that deals with Israel being placed onto the west coast of Africa uh, by the Inquisition and by the, uh, the, ex the expulsion edicts that took place um, throughout Europe. And then from there, we'll kind of roll into our, our next series, or the, the hope is that we'll roll into our next series, which deals with the color of Israel. And in that series, we'll, we'll go into um, you know great detail and review lots and lots of references that deals with the color of the Jews. And we'll also explain why there are different, you know, there, there appears to be two uh, different types of Jews. You have white Jews and or, or red Jews, as they were called, and you have black Jews who are considered the ancient Jews. So we'll go into that and explain that in our, our next series. But for this series, we'll, we'll wrap up um, the expulsion of the Jews from Europe and the, uh, the placement of the Jews onto the west coast of Africa. In this uh, video, we're going to review three references. And now the, the point of these references is to we want to get provide greater detail as to what took place uh, in Portugal, and in, in uh, when at the time when the Jews were being taken out of Portugal and being placed onto the west coast of Africa, because I, I think there's a lot of good information uh, there uh, that you'll want to um, that you'll find interesting. So, and, and again, hopefully these are three references that you haven't seen before. So let's get get started.
All right, so this first reference, and let me see if I can get my, my page number here. And so if you remember in the previous videos, you know, for the most part, we focused on King John because King John was the king of Portugal at the time you know, of the expulsion edict. And that was back in the 1400s or the 15th century. And during the time of King John, that's when Portugal took a lot of their Jews and placed them onto the west coast of Africa. All right. So on your screen here, uh, let's see here. This is um, let me let me do this. We're on page five. Um, 529. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top just so that you can see the title and the author. And most of these books uh, were from the 1800s. I believe one of the references was from the 1700s. And if I can remember to point that out, I, I will. But uh, we like using references that are 1800 or older. You know, the references that have a publication date of 1800 or older because what we found was that those references tend to have a lot of truth in them. Uh, the ones that the books that were uh, printed in the 1900s tend to not have a lot of truth and you know we have you know, we have a lot of theories as to why that is and it has to do with uh, Edomites controlling or taking control of the, of the printing press in the 1900s and we also correlate that with the time that the history in the books began to change. So anyway, that's pure uh, pure theory and supposition, but just wanted to let you know that for the most part, we tend to use books with the publication dates of 1800 or older. Okay, all right, so now that that's out of the way, you should see the, the title and the author on your screen. So it looks like the, the Nautical Magazine, uh, again, this is from the 1800s, I'm just going to scroll down so, that's, so that you can see the, uh, the author as well. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can find our place again. I think we're at we were at 529. All right. So that's 528. And then last but not least, let's go to 529. Okay. All right. So for this quote, we're going to start near the bottom. I'm going to zoom in so that you can read along with me here. And we're going to start in this paragraph. I think that's probably as far as I can zoom in. But we're going to see where it says Barbet. You know, in this um, this paragraph, it says Barbet states that the reign of, you know, you can think of it, look at that as King John II, uh, about the close of the 15th century, it says large numbers of Jews were expelled from Portugal and taken to the coast of southern Guinea. Again, just want to point out, southern Guinea is on the west coast of Africa. So again, what we're seeing is that Reference after reference confirms that the Portuguese place large numbers of Jews on the west coast of Africa. So at this point, you know, we can look at this as an established fact. I think at, at this point, we're beyond uh, this being theory, right? This is an established fact. But let's keep going. So it says, let's start again. It says, Barbert, Barbert states that the reign, that in the reign of King John II, and about the close of the 15th century, right? So in the, la the latter part, the end part of the 1400s, it says large numbers of Jews were expelled from Portugal and taken to the coast of Southern Guinea, west coast of Africa. That the island of St. Thomas on the west coast of Africa, which is not more than 100 miles from the mainland, was populated by mulattoes. And here's, you know, mulattoes, that's a term for, for mixed people. But we'll keep reading and, and we'll find out that the they weren't so mixed. But it says, uh, was populated by mulattoes descendant from the Jewish exiles and Angola women. So here they're, they're supposing that these... Um, uh, that these black Jews were the combination of um, uh, Jews and black women. So let's keep reading. It says, it is possible that the Jewish type of this character noticed in Gaboon and Luango uh, may have originated from this source. But if, if so, it is unknown to the present inhabitants of the country. So in other words, when they ask the people in the country, they like, say, hey, you guys mix like, no. <laughs> so... Um, so they, did, they didn't confirm it. 
So, and if it keeps reading, it says, and it would have been somewhat singular if the Roman Catholic missionaries at Luango had not detected this circumstance. So basically, they're saying that the Roman Catholics, they didn't, they didn't come up to that, to that conclusion. He said, instead of regarding them as pure African family of Jews. So uh, the Roman Catholic looked at them as a pure African family of Jews. So again, you know, we can look at this reference to confirm that the Jews were, were in fact black and they were, um, in this reference, they were looked upon as a, a pure African family of Jews. Okay, a pure African family of Jews. All right, so that's our first reference. And again, we have three references. So if we go over to our second reference, and let me see if I can grab this page number here. So this is on page 141, 141. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to go all the way to the top so you can see the, um, the title and the author. So let's see. This is uh, let's see. This is from Princeton University, the Library of Princeton University, and let's keep scrolling down. The critical review of Annals of Literature, and let's see if we can see the author, all right, uh, by the Society of Gentlemen. And let's see. There's our publication date. It is um, here. We go. I believe that's it. This is in the 1700s here. All right, so now that you've seen that, I'm going to um, see if we can find our our page again. All right, again, just bear with me here while I find it. It's on page 141. I think I went in a bit too far in this case. All right, this should be 141. All right, so again, I'm going to zoom in. And again, let's uh, let's read about King John and the uh, the Jews on the west coast of Africa. Let's see if this provides any additional information. So I'm going to see if I can find a good place to start, and I'm going to bring it all the way to the top of the page. So at the top of the page, you'll see where it says Prince Henry's colonies were enlarged by his successors. So basically he's saying Prince Henry, his colonies on the west coast of Africa, they were expanded by the, by the kings that came after him. So then it says King John II, you know, the king that came after him, in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas. Again, this is in line with the, all the other references that we've read so far. So again, let me start again. It says King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1471. Then it says, and to and now in addition, and to other Portuguese settlements. You got it? So it's saying here it's saying it's King John in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. So it, again, this is confirming that King John not only sent the Jews just to St. Thomas, but he sent them to also to additional places on the west coast of Africa. And we found that, that those additional places were on the west coast of Africa. Okay? And let's read. Uh, let's see if we can read a little, little bit more here. It says, uh, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the Portuguese, I'm sorry, <laughs> let me start again. The And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese. You see that? The black Portuguese as they are called. Again, if you ever had any question about what the color of the Portuguese Jews were, this one should, you know, this one should put I'll put that to bed, right? So let's read it again. It says, let me back up a little bit. It says, 
and the and the and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa, and from these banished Jews. So these banished Jews are the Portuguese Jews that were sent to the west coast of Africa. It says, from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews and the Jews in Luango, who are despised even by the very Negroes. So this is an interesting series of words here. It says, even by the very Negro. So it's almost like saying they're hated by their own people, are descended. So let's read this again. It says, and the Jews in Luango who are despised even by the very Negroes are descended. So and there's there's a lot of information that's behind this statement. I'm just going to bring, just going to touch on it a little bit. Um, on the West Coast of Africa, not only were the, the the descendants of the tribe of Judah or the house of Judah on the west coast of Africa, but also the other tribes of Judah, uh, tribes of the sorry, the children of Israel were on the west coast of Africa. So if you're familiar with you know the children of Israel, you know that there's twelve tribes. And when you when you're doing your research and when you come across the word Negroes, in your mind, in your mind, I want you to think the children of Israel or the 12 tribes of Israel. So whenever you see the word Negroes, think, think of it as the 12 tribes of Israel. And likewise, whenever you see the word Jews, I want you to, you need to think of either the tribe of Judah, which is one of the 12 tribes, or you can think of the house of Judah, which was at the, you know, at initially it consisted of three of the 12 tribes. However, over time, uh, some of the Northern tribes came over uh, to be referred to as the house of Judah. So just know that Jews can refer to either the tribe of Judah or the house of Judah. And also when you think of the word Negroes, think of when you see Negroes, Negroes, you can think of that as the 12, the 12 tribes of, of Israel. So all 12 tribes. Okay. All right. So with that uh, background, let's, uh, let's read that again here. I'm just going to back up here and it says, King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Luango, who are despised, even by the very Negroes, are descended. Okay? And let's see here. Um, maybe some more information here to, to pull out of here. It says, By these col uh, colonists, St. Thomas soon became a considerable place of trade and valuable for its sugar plantations. So we should be familiar with that word, plantations, right? Uh, 30 years after their settlement, so... Th 30 years, after those, 30 years after their settlement, no less than 100, so, or 30 years after their settlement, after whose settlement? After the settlement of these black Portuguese Jews. So 30 years after their settlement, no less than 156,000 uh, 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 robes uh, of 30 pounds weight each of sugar were exported. So basically, after these black Portuguese sh Jews were shipped to the west coast of Africa, they started uh, uh, sending out sugar or exporting sugar from these plantations. It says, and the engines of 60 sugar works turned by slaves. It says, these Negroes, now, now it's saying these Negroes. So at first, a couple of sentences up, we were talking about the Jews, but now it's switching names. If you, I don't know if you picked up on that, but it says... These Negroes were purchased in Guinea, Congo, and many Congo. And the colonists had plantations furnished with from 152,000 Negro slaves. All right. So anyway, so this quote is good, to, uh, is good for pointing out that the Jews that were placed on the west coast of Africa were, in fact, you know, one, they were Jews from Portugal, 
from Portugal. I just want to point that out. They were Jews from Portugal placed onto the west coast of Africa. And again, if you notice that in this reference, it also says that there was a large number of Jews. So it was a lot of them. A lot of Jews were placed on the west coast of Africa. And then it also tells you that these were black Portuguese Jews. Okay? So at this point, you know, we, we should have a good picture of what they looked like and who they were. Okay? All right, so that's the second of our three references. Uh, let's move to our third reference. Now, this reference, um, we're going to cover it in a bit more detail. This reference it's a good reference to point out the the conditions in Portugal and the I, I want to call it the craziness that was happening in, happening in Portugal at the time um, and so for this one let's see we're on page two or I'm sorry 213 and I'm, again I'm going to scroll all the way to the uh, the front of the book let's see if I can get you a good view of the title all right there you go the Jews of the Jews and the Moors in Spain. And this, again, is from uh, in the 1800s. So let's see if we can find our page again. Let's see, 213. There we go. All right, so bear with me just for a second. I'm just going to zoom in. And there we go. All right, so get one more enhanced zoom here. There you go. All right, so on the right side of your screen, you, it should, you should see the text that reads, and this is from page 213. It says nearly, oh, let me give you just a quick background of where this, this reference picks up. So this reference picks up, you know, King John of Portugal, again. So most of the references that we've, that we're, that we've looked at to date deal with King John II of Portugal. And it also deals with the, um, you know, with the Jews coming from Spain. So the Jews were banished from Spain first. And if, when they were kicked out of Spain, you know, if you're looking at a map of Spain, you'll see Portugal was at the, on the left of Spain. So naturally, when the Jews fled out of Spain, they fled into Portugal. And what we've read before was that the king of Portugal, you know, he let the Jews in, but he said, hey, you guys got to pay some money. Um, they, they call it a, 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 I forget, like a tax or something like that. He said, you guys got to pay me some money if you want to come in, in here. And not only that, you know, he allowed them to come to temporary, temporarily stay there. And I believe it was for eight months. He said, I'll let you guys come in here on your way to Africa. So he's, so basically he says, you know, you guys can come in, but you can't stay. Okay. So this is where this, this quote picks up. So let's, let's take a look at this quote. It says nearly 150,000 souls made their way by land to Portugal, whose King, King John the second, right? dispensed with the scruples, and I'll, I'll break this down for you, the scruples of uh, conscience so far as to allow his greed to triumph over his, over his creed. So basically it's saying when the king of Portugal saw these Jews coming in, he wanted to make some money. Basically, he said, okay, well, you, you guys can come in, but uh, we got to do some business first, right? So he says he granted them a passage through his dominion on their way to Africa. Did you catch that? It says, he granted them a passage through his dominion on their way to Africa and the permission of an eight month stay in his realm. So he said, I'll let you stay here for eight months on your way to Africa, but then after that, you gotta be gone. All right, so it then says, in consideration of a tax of $8 a head, which which immense sum, so back in the day, that's saying that was a lot of money, is that which immense sum he levied from the native Portuguese Jews. So let's pause right here just to get make sure you understand what it just said. It said, so this, the, the Jews in Spain, right? Jews in Spain coming into Portugal. King of Portugal wanted to make some money. He said, hey, you, you guys, I'll let you guys come on in on your way going out. But on your way coming in, you got to pay some money. And I'm not going to tell you what. I'm not going to get money from you. I'm going to get money from your brothers here in Portugal. So basically, he taxed the Portuguese Jews for their, their brothers coming in. It soon gave way to the most frightful era of the exiles suffering. All right. So after the Jews came in, it's, 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 what it's saying is that something bad happened. And it says, 
when 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 the news reached the homeless exiles so the spanish jews that came to portugal portugal it says when the news reached the, the homeless exiles of the atrocity or atrocious crimes inflicted upon their brethren on their way to the african coast by inhumane captains and heartless crews seeing nothing but cruel death before them whether going or whether remaining they preferred meeting death in portugal so basically you know as the, as the jews were from spain came into portugal and some of them went to africa you know they were getting word back that uh some of their brothers their their, their brethren that were getting on those ships they weren't making it some of them weren't making it to their destination some of them were were being uh well most of them were being pillaged and you know raped and their clothes taken from them from them and they were being dumped onto the west coast on the coast of africa and we've read that on some of our other other references so the jews that hadn't got on the boat yet you know they're they're hearing the you know these the word get, getting back to them about what's going on and they're saying man if this is going to happen, I might as well just stay here and uh, and take my chances here. So that's just, this is what that's saying. It's saying that they they heard all the all the bad things that were happening to them, happening to the, the ones that were getting on the ship from Portugal to go to Africa. That they decided to take their chances in in Portugal. So let's see. It says um, uh, let's pick it up again where it says African coast by inhumane captains and heartless crews, seeing nothing but cruel death before them whether going or whether remaining they preferred meeting death in portugal to exposing themselves to the inhumane and beastly lust and tortures of barbarous pirate sailors and african savages and listlessly awaiting death and praying for it they remained after the time purchased for their stay had passed away so basically you know king of portugal said I'll give you eight months on your way to Africa. But then after that eight months, if you're still around, you know, I'm going to arrest you, you know, and do some bad things to you. So the ones that hadn't got on the ships, they said, you know what? You know, we, you know, there looks like there are our brethren are, are dying on the ships anyway. You know, let's just stay here in Portugal and take our chances here in Portugal. So it says to their misfortune, it said the plague broke out in Portugal and raged with dead, deathly fury. So, you know, the, as the Portuguese were staying there, plague broke out. And what we know is that according to Deuteronomy 28, that the plague, that the plague would, would follow the Jews, you know, wherever they went. And that was part of the curse of the Jews from turning away from, from, from Yah's word. And as we take a look at it, just want to take a quick look here. So we look at Deuteronomy 28, and this is verse 21. So Deuteronomy 28, verse 21, just to take a quick look at the plagues, where it says, um, The Elohim shall make the pestilence cleave unto you, until he has consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. It says, The Elohim shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish so part of the curse was that the um, um, these pestilences and these plagues would follow the Jews wherever they went and what we're seeing in this reference is, you know, that came, that truly did come to pass uh, while they were sitting there in Portugal. So let's uh, let's turn the page. And let's go over to um, just bear with me just for a moment. Going to go up to the top of the next page. So it says, um, so when the Jews got the the plague, it says, and it it says lashed the populace into a relentless fury. So the the population got uh, uh, mad when the the Jews brought this plague with them. It says, because of the visitation of the plague and the breach of contract on the part of the Jews. 
So the breach of the contract was the fact that, they, that those Jews decided not to get on those ships because they didn't want to die on their ships. They decided to stay in Portugal. So they considered that a breach of contract. It says the, creed, the, the king's creed awoke again simultaneously with the awakening of his greed. So when he, the king got caught word of that, then the greedy king you know, had a new plan. So the new, greedy, greedy king of uh, Portugal, in this case King John, he came up with a new plan. He says he issued an edict which threw, that, threw even that of Torquemada into the shade. So basically it says, you know, when the greedy king heard that the Jews had breached their contract, and that they were still there and that they uh, that the plague was breaking out because of them then he came up with an even uh, uh, a worse edict or worth a worse decree than the one that was before so this is what he came up with and this is the reason why you know we wanted to bring this reference uh, to light so if you so if you can uh, pay close attention from from here for sure so look it says all Jewish children below 14 years of age. I'm going to read this slow. It says, All Jewish children below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms. Okay? Let's think about that for a moment. All Jewish children be below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms dragged into church into the church baptized all right so all the jewish children under 14 years of age snatched from their parents taken to the church and baptized right and it says those under three years of age so those children that were under three years of age were given to christians to receive a Christian education. <laughs> so I got to stop here. I have to provide just a little bit of uh, commentary. So, so the babies, the toddlers and the babies. Just want to put it put it into perspective. The toddlers and the babies were taken from their mothers and given to the Christians. Uh, to receive a Christian education. And it says, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. You get that? It says, to receive a Christian education, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. So the toddlers and the babies were taken from these black Jews in Portugal and given to foster parents to be raised as slaves and to be brought up as Christians. Then let's keep reading. It says, those between the age, between three and 10 years old. So now we're talking about a different age group. So we learned that the toddlers and the babies were given to Christians to be raised as slaves, right? So we know that these are, are black babies. And then it says, those between three and 10 years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas called the Island of Perdition or the Island of Punishment. All right, I gotta add commentary to this as well. So. Between the ages of three and ten, so that would be preschoolers and elementary kids. So that's like taking preschoolers and elementary kids, and then so they took the preschoolers and elementary kids and put them put them on board of a ship and sent them to the west coast of Africa. Okay. All right. So let's keep reading. It says, which was colonized by Portuguese condemned criminals. And we, underst we understood from our previous references that these were condemned criminals from the Inquisition who were also Jews, right? And it says, uh, let's see, was colonized by Portuguese condemned criminals to fare there as best they could. So they took the 
preschoolers all the way up to the elementary kids took them away from their parents stuck them on ships sent them to the west coast of Africa to survive okay it says then indeed the cup of their affliction was full to the brim okay and I'm just gonna pause right here just to point out in you know Deuteronomy 28 and the reason why I keep going back and forth is because I want you to understand that this was foretold like this was was prophesied uh, in Deuteronomy 28 and that you know we shouldn't be surprised that this happened because Israel you know our forefathers broke the commandment with uh, with the Most High and so and when we go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 32 it says thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thine hand let me read that again and there shall be no might in thy hand what's significant about that is that if there was might in your hand they wouldn't have been able to take them out of them out of their hands out of their arms right so if there is might in the in the hands and the arms of these black jews the portuguese wouldn't have been able to rip them from rip these those babies those those preschoolers and those toddlers or actually the infants as well out of their out of their arms and and also uh, deuteronomy 28 41 or says thou shalt beget sons and daughters but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So just wanted to point out that this was foretold. This was a byproduct out of Israel breaking their promise. But the, you know, the interesting thing about these, um, these references is, is that it gives a, uh, de you know, additional detail as far as like how this actually happened and, and the, the, the uh, the way it happened so all right so start where we picked up where we left off it says uh you know those between the eight between 10 oh, i'm sorry let me back up uh i almost lost my place here it says those between three and ten years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of saint thomas called the island islands of perdition or the islands of punishment which was colonized by portuguese condemned criminals and other jews to fare there as best they could so the preschoolers and the elementary kids weren't sent pushed on a boat i mean they weren't sent on a well, they weren't put on a bus they were put on a ship and they were sent to the west coast of Africa. Okay? So then it says, those between 10 and 14 years, yeah, those between 10 and 14 years were sold as slaves. So we just read that in Deuteronomy 28, right? So again, those between 10 and 14, again, we're still talking um, elementary kids, they were sold as slaves as elementary kids. It says, then indeed the cup of their affliction was full to the brim. It was a stern truth which Lanou uttered when he said, and that's German, we're going to skip that. All right, so at this point you should understand that the Jews were placed on the west coast of Africa, and you should also understand who put the Jews on the west coast of Africa. And who was there, right? So now we have a we have a better understanding of what ages they were when they were placed there, and you know the conditions that that was there when they were placed there. But let's keep reading because um, we want to get a some additional understanding of of uh, of uh, you know how this impacted the Jews. So uh, I'm going to go to back to the bottom of the page. It says the Jews have experienced fully the unequal skills of the church in administrating pain. Mothers cast themselves at the feet 
of the tyrants and pitifully begged to be taken with their babies. They were heartless, heartlessly thrust aside. You know, get out of here. Hundreds of mothers, mad with despair, ran behind the ships. Can you imagine that? Mothers running behind the ships as they were carried, as they carried off the idols of their heart and perished in the waves. So mothers were so, so mad with despair, with, with losing their newborns, their babies, their elementary kids, that they ran behind the ships, jumped in the water and swam after the ships only to perish in the waves. It says the serene fortitude with which the ex the exile people had borne so many go to the top of the page here so many and such grievous uh, yeah grievous uh, calamities gave way at last and was replaced with the wildest paroxysms of despair. It says piercing streaks of anguish filled the land. Childless and brokenhearted, they now sought to leave the land. But they were told that they had forfeit their right. And were given the choice between baptism and slavery. So basically, because, you know, again, these were Jews that came from Spain and Portugal. When they heard that the that the Jews that that were leaving Spain, that they that they were being killed, that they were being dumped on the west coast of west coast of Africa, and they chose instead to uh, take their chances in Portugal. And then when they when they stayed in Portu Portugal, King John, at the time, gave a a, a, a uh, edict or command to have their children taken away from them and then sent to Africa. So then after the children of these these black Jews were taken away from them, then the parents were, then the parents um, looked to leave. You know, they wanted to leave that place, but then they couldn't go. Then the Portuguese said, no, you, you know, you, uh, you, you know, you, you, you missed your date. You know, you missed the time to get out. So now that you're stuck here in Portugal, you got two choices. You can either be baptized into Christianity or you can go into slavery. Those were the two choices. It says, thousands after enduring all that they did after leaving their beloved Spain and all their wealth and ease. Now, they want to point out that these Jews were wealthy when they left Spain. But here, you know, in Portugal is, is where you begin to see them separated from their wealth and separated uh, and the children were separated from their parents, which was the beginning of the Jews being separated from their history. Right. So the Jews were being separated. These kids were being separated from their parents, separated from their their history and being raised to be something else. So instead of being God's people, God's people, the children of Israel, they were they were raised to be something else. And at this point, I do want to kind of insert a, a, a I call it a supposition or, a, 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 you know, my belief here is that the so-called African-American are the children that were taken away from their parents. And that's why the so-called African-American, that the reason why they don't have their full history is because they were raised to be something else. So uh, let's get back on topic. So let's see here. It says thousands after enduring all they did after leaving their beloved Spain and all their wealth and ease submitted to baptism. Now they said, all right, you know what? You got us whooped. You took our children. You took our babies. I'll be a Christian. I'll do it. You can baptize me. It said in the hope of reuniting with their children. So that's why they did it. They said, look, you took my kids. I'll be a Christian. You know, just reunite me with my babies. Right. So let's keep reading. It says thousands were sold as slaves. Thousands were sold as slaves. So thousands of these 
black Portuguese Jews were sold as slaves. Yet, prior to their being sold, they were submitted to tortures, cruelties, outrageous, too revolting, too, too repulsing, uh, too heartrending to be here narrated. So this author is basically saying that before they were um, sold as slaves, they, you know, bad things happened to them, and these bad things were so bad that he can't write them down. You know, he doesn't want to write them down in this book. Is what he's saying. It says terror seized upon the native Portuguese Jews. It says when they helplessly beheld the cruelties uh, to which their Spanish brothers were subjected, and it's interesting that it was the Spanish brethren that were subjected to these. So the children, the initial wave of children that were sent to the west coast of Africa were the Spanish Jews. So remember, they were kicked out of Spain, they came into Portugal, and then King of Portugal said, you guys can come in on your way out to Africa. So, you know, just want, also want to point out the fact that so-called African-American, one of their names was Negro, which was the Spanish name for black. Did you get that? So-called African-Americans were called Negro, which was the Spanish name for black. And if you ever wanted to, you know, why are you, were you called the Spanish name for black? Well, you can begin to see it here. It was the Spanish Jews that came into Portugal. And it was the Spanish Jews, their children, that were sent to the west coast of Africa. So, if, you know, now you should see all the, the pieces of history begin to fit back into place. Okay. All right. So let's see here. I think there's some more information here at the bottom. Um, it goes on to say that, you know, King John II uh, eventually dies and his successor, Manuel, you know, came to the throne, ascended the throne, and that, you know, he married, ended up marrying, um, I believe it was Isabella of Spain, and, you know, to join their two kingdoms, so to, to join Portugal and Spain. And so, um, Manuel, King Manuel, um, you know, he he had a heart for the Jews. So he wanted to ease some of the things that uh, King John had done. But once he married Isabella, Isabella didn't like the Jews. So she made him uh, continue the, um, the expulsion edict. Uh, so as you can see, I'm going to skip down here. I'm going to scroll the screen up just so that if you start at the top, it says... Um, it says already he saw himself in the near future king of the of United Spain and Portugal, and of the entire new new world. It says, but Satan stepped between, dipped his pen in gall, and writing the marriage contract. So in the marriage contract, when the king of Portugal and the you know in this Spain, I guess he was the queen of Spain, it was in the contract, the marriage contract, that they kick these Jews out and do bad things for them. It says, demanded as one of the conditions the immediate expulsion from Portugal of all the Jews, both natives and exiles. It says, the king hesitated. It said, the fanatical daughter of the fanatical parents persisted. So the crazy wife was like, uh, you, you got to do this. If you, you, know, you want to join our two kingdoms, you got to uh, kick those Jews out. So uh, let's see. Let's see if I can fast track here. Uh, so he planned a strategy. So that, you know, the king at the time, King Manuel at the time, he, he wanted to to give the Jews a break, but the, his his wife wouldn't let him. Uh, let's see here. And let's see, he gave secret secret orders for the uh, repetition of the atrocious crimes of having all the children under fourteen years of age seized from their mother's bosom and father's arms. So at some point, um, King Emmanuel gave in. And so then he gave, you know, his order. He's like, all right, we got to get this marriage done. Go and take the children from the parents. Okay. And um, let's see what happened. It says, and these are, and keep in mind, so these were not only the Spanish Jews, but now this included the Portuguese Jews. Okay. So 
He gave secret orders for the repetition of the atrocious crime of having all the children under 14 years of age seized from, from their mother's bosom and father's arm, dispersed through the kingdom to be baptized and brought up as Christians. The secret became known. So just make sure we understand. It says, uh, according to this, it says that the Jews that were left in Portugal, they were commanded to uh, take all the children and then send them to uh, the Christian families in Portugal to be raised as Christians. It says, uh, fanatical mothers threw their children into deep wells of, or rivers. And it reads, <clears throat> mothers were known to take their babies from their breasts and tear them limb from limb rather than to resign them to Christians. They would rather know the bodies of their children in the graves and their released spirit in heaven than have them adopt a faith into which Satan sent his friends for their... Let, let, let me read that again. All right, and keep in mind that this version of Christianity that these Jews are fighting so passionately against is the Roman version of Christianity. Just want to put that out there. Uh, because it, it's a twisted version of Christianity. So let's let's read it here. It says, uh, uh, mothers were known to take their babies from their breasts and tear them limb from limb rather than to resign them to Christians. They would rather know the bodies of their children in the grave and their released spirit in heaven than, than have them adopt a faith into which Satan sent his friends or their, their schooling. With all the parents' opposition, the king's order was executed. Many accepted baptism, but not enough to please the king and to wreak vengeance upon, upon them for thwarting his wishes. He revoked his edict, seized all who had not yet fled and sold them as slaves. Okay. So. That's the end of the third reference. And again, the point of this reference is to, to give you an idea of what actually happened in Portugal. And this is a good reference to, to show you the, 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 uh, the state of affairs in Portugal as the Jews were sent to the west coast of Africa. So just to kind of review what we've learned through these references. So we learned that the Jews were referred to as Portuguese Jews, or black Portuguese Jews. We learned that the, the Jews that came into Portugal were Spanish Jews, right? Because they came from Spain. And the king of Portugal, you know, he gave them a temporary residency. He said, you guys can stay here for eight months on your way to Africa. And that we learned that for the Jews that, were, that made it to Africa, he said that they were being plundered of their goods, that they were being stripped of their clothes and valuables and that they were being dumped on the west coast of Africa. And that the, the Spanish Jews that hadn't gone yet, that you know, once they, they caught wind of what was happening, that they decided to take their chances in Portugal. And that when they decided to, to stay in Portugal, that's when things went from bad to worse, right? So that's when the, the king had issued a... Um, an edict to take the children, you know, from the between the ages of 14, 14 years or, or younger. So the, the references that we read today talked about the children from 14 years of, or younger. But we have additional references that shows that he later increased that uh, to include the, the, the children, the Jewish children from the ages of the 20s and younger. So it was a, a lot of children that were taken from their parents in Portugal. You know, these Spanish Jews that were in Portugal and these the Portugal Portuguese sent them to the West Coast 
of Africa. And which is why, you know, again, these were Spanish Jews, which is why the so-called African Americans were called Negroes, the Spanish word for black. And we read that they were black Portuguese, right? So, but they were, but the, the, twist, the twist here is that they were actually the Spanish Jews. So that's why they used the Spanish word for black instead of the Portuguese word for black. So, all right. So now that we have that, um, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish this series here with this, this last reference. And then what we'll do is that for, our next, for the next series of videos, we'll, we'll move into the color of the Jews. And we'll attempt to explain why today there are two classes of Jews. You know, why there is a, uh, black Jews, which are considered the ancient Jews, and why there are red Jews or white Jews. And where they come from, have to, we have to provide some history on that uh, to, to, so that you can understand why you have the two sects and where, where they come from. So we'll you know, look for that, and then uh, from there we'll move into um, Esau. You know, that's a very important topic for, um, you know, for so-called African Americans, is the history of Esau, the history of Edom. And that goes into, you know, the Ashkenazi Jews and some other interesting facts that you really need to know. So, again, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you can, take the time to go ahead and subs uh, subscribe. And just so that you can get notified of when new videos come out. And uh, have a blessed day and shalom. Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Most High God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. But if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Most High to observe and do all his commandments, then curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these lies and delusions Wake me up, show me a new dawn Open your eyes Got the ways of the heathen to make a covenant with Satan's government. Turn their face away from the Most High, evil desire. Second Kings 17 said they passed their sons and daughters through the fire. They begin cutting divine spiritual ties, clinging to the heathen lies. Evil spirits bind, breaking souls, breaking spirits, ripping flesh, breaking minds. Running from the Most High wrath on the bloodstained path. 70 AD, Israelites fall. The Most High's chosen seed. Go into captivity. He blew Israelites, watch nations rise, they watch nations fall. Four beasts, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece. We pray for the fall of the fourth beast. Under the iron foot of Rome, we long to go home. A hopeless nation lies dead in the valley of the dry bones. Simulation, simulation of Shemites to Hamite clones. Israelites roam. Awake, 
the most highest people, the Israelites. The earth has swallowed the flood of deception. The harvest ripe for collection. His people are walking, standing like a mighty army. The most high has summoned. The Hebrews are coming. Awake, come out of captivity. Awake, you who sleep. Arise, receive the most high's laws and commandments. We are the Israelites. All these lies and delusions Wake me up, show me a new dawn Open your eyes, rise children of light I am awakened, I am awakened whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, you are.